Don't. I'd like to call to order the Board of Commissioners meeting for March the 1st. Please join uh, the Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Come with me, please, friends. Our most high and merciful Lord, look upon us now as we are a people who are in constant need of your hand and grace. Thank you for all the blessings before us. Let us be proper stewards of these blessings so that we may make good decisions for our people. Bless our people who protect and serve us, our first responders, our military abroad. Keep them out of harm's way. Thank you, Lord, for these things. Amen. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which is one nation under God. Well, we do have a full quorum tonight with four members present. Y'all have reviewed uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Could uh, get a motion? I make a motion to accept as presented. Second. So moved. Johnson. Changes to the agenda. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration, the, be the addition of item I2A, which is a condition uh, for a item that we took up at the last meeting. It would be a variance for 22-02-01. Is We do have a couple of people that would like to speak. Uh, if you would, we'll call you up as that agenda item is coming up. All right. Uh, now to the consent agenda. We had three votes in committee. Uh, Y'all are okay with those? Can make a get a motion? Motion to accept is presented. Second. <clears throat> Everyone in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries four zero. Now to the debate agenda and New business. Mr. Johnson, if you'd like to come up? I think your agenda item is up. Yep. Michael, yes, sir. Up. Yes, sir. If you would, if you would, give us your name and address for the record. My name is Michael Johnson, Michael E. Johnson, 1284 Marks Church Road. But I, I want to thank you all for letting me come speak tonight about the Love Locks. You know, they, they really mean a lot to me. I, um, well, first of all, I was going to say I was born in Columbia County, and my family runs really deep. Because, I mean, we go way back. But anyway, I, I had went on a vacation to Ukraine, of all places, but I saw some love locks over there. I figured I'd bring them over here. I did with the second one. I'm authority. That oh, they're too heavy. That was the first thing. I said, oh, okay. So anyway, I, I did speak with somebody on this authority. I did get permission. You originally started the box? I made a dollar fifty investment on the Columbia County Love Locks are known world. A view by Brides Magazine. Y'all see that article? But anyway, right off the bat, uh, when we first love locks out there, uh, a company that makes love locks, and I sent them a picture, and they said, Mike, y'all have the most beautiful love locks in the United States. That was the first day. Then, as, as it went on, there was some discussion, I believe, about maybe, uh, are they uh, uh, graffiti or, but they're not. They are memorial. A lot of them are memorial. And, um, First people that noticed it was Explore Georgia. C and D. One of them was electric. That's pretty good. 
And then when the Brides magazine came out, that was really icing on the cake. And, um, <clears throat> but I think that I would like to see Columbia County racing a little bit. I saw an ad the other day Columbia, about Columbia, 25 things to do in Columbia County. Talked about the old lock and dam by the gate. There's a lot more going on out there than the gatekeepers at it. <clears throat> but anyway, I would like to see the, you know, the love lock stay. And I would love to see them build a, a new structure. I'm not against the new structure at all. But, you know, don't, don't just yank them down. <laughs> like, let's get, do the new, new structure. Try to <coughs> add to that. And then, you know, later on, maybe just make it nicer than what we got. That's about all I have to say. I hope y'all consider, you know, maybe the bait and switch, you know. After you build something nicer, I'd love to see some lighting out there. The other thing is, have you been out there? There's not even a chair. There's not even a bench. <laughs> so the only reason to go out there is to put a love lock or walk or run. You know? But it would be nice to have a place to sit. Enjoy the place. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the Recreation Board to allow the CVB's public art sculpture in Savannah Rapids Park at the location indicated on the provided aerial. Second. Questions or comment? I have something, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just for clarification purposes, the, the motion in front of the board is to move forward with this. Uh, there, there was a lot of discussion about the locks that are currently in place out there, uh, that, is, that is property that is owned by the Augusta Canal Authority. Uh, so uh, we've been in, in, in some discussions, but Columbia County has no intentions of removing anything that's out there now. Uh, that would be up to the Augusta Canal Authority to do whatever. So uh, I know Mr. Johnson was very interested in this. Basically what we're doing is exactly what he's asked for, is we're enhancing the, this with a public art sculpture and uh, then we're going to heavily landscape it, potentially put benches out there. So I think on the Columbia County side, it'll be a very good addition. Anything else there? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Your hand. Johnson? Yeah. Hey, <clears throat> next item, uh, Mr. Mitchell, I'd like to come forward and speak. Mr. Mitchell here. Mr. Hauser. You would please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Kevin Hauser. I reside at 1548 Driftwood Lane in Grovetown, Georgia. Um, I come to you tonight pertaining to the rezoning here for 220202, as well as it also applies to the 220203, the Tillery Park edition. Um, so first off, I'd like to thank the commission for approving my request to speak. My reason for coming to speak tonight was not to oppose the development of the areas along Baker Place Road, but more so to express my concern about the supporting infrastructure and additional traffic that will come with the increased in neighborhoods and offer possible recommendations or conditions that I hope you will put in place before allowing the developers to move forward. <clears throat> when I state supporting infrastructure, I'm not only referencing the roads, but also the schools, and even the bridge that crosses I-20 on Baker Place Road. Um, my family and I have moved to Grovetown almost six years ago, and as we all know, has been, there has been a significant growth in this area, um, which has resulted in an increase in traffic, primarily due to the normal commute times, primarily during the normal commute times, sorry. For the purpose of keeping this short and within the required time, I'll provide statistics on two roads that are very similar in nature, nature Chamblin Road and Baker Place Road. On Chamblin Road, you have Canterbury Farms, Indian Springs, and Mill Branch. Between these, those three neighborhoods, it accounts for roughly 1,400 homes, whereas Baker Place Road contains Hidden Creek, Retreat at Baker Place, and Kalari, adding up to almost 1,300 homes. As the developments, primarily Canterbury Farms, were growing along Chamberlain Road, it was determined that something was needed to be done at both ends to address the backup in traffic. This resulted in stoplights being installed at both ends, as well as turn lanes, which significantly improved the traffic movement. For Baker Place Road, if you attempt to travel from any of the developments on William Few, who William Few, from 7, 8 a.m., you'll be waiting in traffic for roughly 30 minutes, close to an hour some mornings. 
obviously during school traffic and then you know people going to work. Um, on the other end, intersection of Wrightsboro Road and Baker Place, normally traffic backs up almost a mile, usually lasts from 7 to 9 a.m. Same result, 30 minutes to an hour back up. And then again in the afternoon from about 4 to 5. That's obviously not near as bad as the morning, um, but it still does back up. With the addition of the two developments on Baker Place Road, being Hillary Park and the proposal of Arden Glen, as well as the connector being proposed between Canterbury Farms and Tillery Park, the number of homes on Baker Place will almost double, which in turn means even more vehicles in the mix. It was stated during the Planning Commission meeting that the county is not able to address the potential traffic until they obtain traffic surveys, which normally happens after the fact. However, given what we know from encountering the same issue on Chamlin Road, I feel the survey would be too late and really pointless since we've already experienced this. Now, I don't know what can be done to improve the traffic on William View. The schools, it's a stoplight there already. I, I don't know what can be done there. But as far as the other end, where is Wrightsboro Road connects to Baker Place Road, addressing it with some sort of stoplight as well as turn lanes, I think would be very beneficial, aiding in traffic flow and as well as reducing the traffic accidents that do happen there. I think just maybe two or three weeks ago, there was a pretty significant traffic accident with a car rolled over. <coughs> um, so... In addition to that, with the amount of homes being built, we'll also see an increase in the amount of kids walking to and from school each day. Currently, there's only a short length of sidewalk that Kalari put in to come out, the, come out the development and cross the road to go towards the high school and middle school. But there's no other sidewalks along that road providing a easy access for these kids, which makes it very unsafe. They either walk through knee-high grass or they walk on the shoulder of the road. With the traffic, shoulder of the road is not a very good idea for them to do. Um, during the planning commission meeting, the representative for Arden Glen, which is Mr. Lawrence, uh, stated that he'll work with a developer to possibly put sidewalks in front of Arden Glen, um, which will help, but it's still going to leave about a quarter to a half a mile of no sidewalks along Baker Place Road, which still results in the same issue. So I think for the safety of our children, we really need to look at sidewalks as well. That is all I have. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, Mr. Slaughter, would you like to address a couple of those comments before we make the motion on maybe the future of Wrightsboro Road and Baker Place somewhere down the... Yes, sir. So staff, Mr. Titus is here. I believe I saw him come in. Yeah, Mr. Titus is here. His staff, he's our county engineer. He is currently working with GDOT on that traffic signal at Baker Place Road at Wrightsboro Road. Uh, Riceboro Road is a state route, therefore we have to go through the state to have that signal approved, and then ultimately we can install it. So he is currently working that issue. Um, anything you want to add to that, Mr. Titus? So we're working it as we speak. Um, take some time to get to Atlanta. We're doing that. Um, as far as the Board of Education, they reviewed this. They had no comments. Actually, if you read the report, it says no comment from the Board of Education. Um, Sidewalk issue is, is I hear the sidewalk concern. Um, there's another item you're going to be discussing that, that provides some sidewalk on Baker Place Road in the area he's referring to. You'll hear that in just a minute. Um, the bridge he referred to across I-20 that will be the bottleneck. There is no sidewalk across that bridge. Um, to add a sidewalk would be quite the undertaking, so it, it can't happen overnight. Um, it'd probably be basically a, bri a bridge replacement, bringing up the current standards for lane widths, shoulder widths sidewalk so that's that's quite a, a haul would that be a county project it would be a county project it's a county road uh, we'd have to get involved with the feds to get the, the approval since it is a federal highway but um, very involved but it's something that we have seen and we know in the future we're going to have to do it we, we know it's coming so. and on the sidewalks i know we work real <coughs> hard uh to get some going down into the high middle school and high school uh, a couple of years ago right uh now with that is coming with some of this next rezoning how much of an area is left and is that something that we can look at absolutely um I have a somewhat of a map here um kind of i know it's the next one right we can we can either either talk about that when we get to that or, or whatever uh, i just wanted to address the comments and we are working and looking at those you know there's a need and we're trying to address them right 
And I want to point out one thing about this rezoning. I know it's been reported in the media a lot lately over the last week or two that this is approval of 800 homes. That is not the case whatsoever. This is 67 homes. So I just want to make that crystal clear. Right. Not 800, <coughs> 67. So. Okay. Mr. Skinner, you have a motion for us? Yes, sir. Uh, I guess it's okay for me to take, uh, since this is the same file, two motions. Both uh, together. If you do one at a time. One, one at a time. time. Yep. Okay. Uh, file RZ220202, Part 1. I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from RAPRD, <coughs> property located at tax map 051, parcel 69, subject to the conditions enumerated in the February 17, 2022 Planning Commission report. Second. I'll second. Comments on these? Can I have just one more time the difference between the, these two, 02 and 03? What specifically is the difference? Absolutely. So, so I make sure I'm clear. So, <coughs> part one that you said 02 and 03, okay. right now we, they're both 02. Part one is a rezoning of the piece you see here. It's currently zoned RA and they're zoning it to PRD. So, that's what you're voting on now is, is whether or not you're going to allow them to go to PRD of RA. Which means that's the, uh, that's the 67 homes. Correct. Part two is a major PRD revision. So Tillery, which is an existing PRD that's already been voted on, it's already approved, it's already under construction, they're revising their PRD to bring this into it if you approve the rezoning from RA to PRD. So, so two doesn't, the part two doesn't matter if one doesn't pass. If one doesn't pass, two doesn't need to be voted. I guess it's there. I guess you still have to vote on it. To, you still vote on it, but if you don't pass one, you can't pass two. There, there's a good look at it. This is the this is the rezoning piece you're talking about tonight. The rest of this above here is already has its already. Okay. This second part will have will be when it becomes a part of Tillery, it'll, have, it'll be a part of the amenity thing that goes along with it already. Correct. And you see here, this is the connection to Canterbury Farms on Canterbury Parkway here. There's also will be a connection into Canterbury Farms through here. Uh, approved. Well, this will happen whether this is approved or not. That's that's already been handled. <coughs> that connection that he was referring to with the, all the traffic. This connection is, is dependent upon this rezoning. About in Canterbury Farms that already built out with an intent going into this property sometime in the future. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? State of one. Okay, Mr. Chair, the same file, RZ 220202, part two. I'll make a motion to approve the request for a major PRD revision for property located at tax map 051, parcel 049B, in order to expand the Tillery Park PRD and revise the conceptual site plan subject to the conditions enumerated in the February 17th, 2022 Planning Commission report. We have a second? Second? Comments on, on this? Questions? <clears throat> All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Yes, sir. We'll continue on. File RZ220203. I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from R A to PUD for the properties located at tax map 051, parcel 008K, 003K. 1768, portion of 004G, 004E, 004B, subject to the conditions enumerated in the February 17, 2022 Planning Commission report. Uh, 
going to be free it never thought and struggle uh no that's well, I'll be we're not there yet well, I'll be too that's the next one we're not there yet mr chairman uh, item okay, two okay okay all right yep. okay all right all right uh have them uh second i'll second um comments questions All in favor, raise your right hand. One. Okay, Mr. Chair, now we're down to the uh, variance. Uh, it'll be file VA 220205. I make a motion to approve an encroachment agreement and the request for variances to section 90 53 list of lot and structural requirements and 90 144 placement of buildings and structures for property located at tax map 078B, parcel 106, to reduce the building setbacks for existing structures and to allow an existing chain link fence to remain subject to the conditions enumerated in the February 17, 2022 Planning Commission report with the condition that the large utility building be moved to satisfy the ordinance with uh, this condition. Second. Yeah, do you pull up that picture? Okay. And kind of circle what I'm talking about. You want to get the second before we go into discussion? Have a second. I need to understand what it is before I second it. So. This motion he made is to allow <coughs> the structures and the fence that are on this site to remain with the exception of number two. Number two, he is asking that it be relocated to meet current setbacks per code. So number one would allow to stay, the chain link fence that's out there would allow to stay, but you're asking number two to be relocated to meet code. That, that's the way I understood your motion. That's correct. Doctor, are these lines correct? It looks like one is well over the line as well. There, there's there's some issues with whether or not those lines are perfect. Can't guarantee they're perfect. Patrice, do you have the, the survey? So if you look at the actual plat that was approved in 86, this shed was building number one that was on that location, and you see that it shows per survey it's, it's on the property proper um the side lot line there it, it's it's right on it i mean it's it's to the line however on this survey here you do not see building number two that commissioner skinner was asking to have relocated so can we go back to the aerial building one is the one that was shown on that survey from 86. we do have a disclaimer on our maps online that say this is a representation not to be trusted perfectly Fairly accurate, but we can't trust it the way we can trust a on-ground survey. I understand your motion to be that move building two, but leave the fence. That's correct. And leave and, building and one. the other building. Building one stays. The uh, build, it the, stays. The, the, the only movement stays. is the new building that was added, uh, building number two. Uh, remove it within the. And there's a third one too. If you look at that bottom, one. there's a third one that's not on the right aerial there. photograph. But it stays. Number three stays. Or number three. That's goes. the way the motion was yes, that made. Was the motion. So, right. so if all the conditions are met, the property of the person asking for the variance is going to be removed from the neighbor. I'm sorry. Can you say it again? If There's all the conditions are met, these structures and all the property of the person asking for the variance is are going to be removed from the neighbor's property. No. So those the only only one that would be moved would be number two. Everything else will stay just like it sits. If if y'all vote this motion through. Number three, proper setback? Or? I don't believe it meets setbacks either. It's inside the setbacks. Grab the other water commission. Number three is uh, supposed to be removed regardless. The, deci the motion, as I understood it, was for building two to be relocated in a manner that meets the current county codes for setbacks. Not number three. Number three would be removed regardless. 
that's part of the um, ongoing uh, code enforcement action. So the motion that was made <coughs> covers what needs to happen in number three. Number, three, yeah, number, number three has been already dealt with. It, so I don't need to add that to the motion. Okay. It deals with uh, items one or accessory buildings one and two, the house and the existing chain link fence and how those would be handled moving forward. I'll second your motion. Comments? All in favor of the motion? Right hand. Four zero. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number twenty two dash zero nine suspension of utility encroachment permitting fee collection. Second. Any questions or comments? I do have some questions on this and where are we at in Obviously, when we created this not long ago, there was a need that uh, expenses that weren't being met or met by the property owners or uh, taxpayers of Columbia County, and we felt a need that it <coughs> needed to go where it was, who, who was getting the service. Where are we at with that, and when do you think we'll have something in place? So when we presented this, we knew we had some bumps in the road we were going to have to absorb. Um, we found them. We know what they are. So that's what you have before you is that the staff is asking to suspend them while we figure out the proper way to write these fees. Um, right now, we have not done anything because we board voted last year to do these. We are doing these up until this moment. If you vote to suspend these, we will start our meetings with these utility companies on our rewriting. We will have this back in front of you prior to our uh, July 1 new fiscal year starting, so we'll be prepared to start our fee back collection back July 1. The new fiscal year. I have been in contact with the biggest players, and they are ready to sit at the table. We we have it. I think we've got it worked out. We know where we need to be. It's just showing them on paper the actual language. I've been in contact with Mr. Driver on how to write it. He's We're ready to go, but, of course, we didn't take action pending your vote tonight. But we think we're ready to go. We'll have something in place by the next next fiscal year right so it just FYI also you did approve with this fee schedule you approved a third utility inspector we have not hired that inspector probably get all this worked out so we'll probably hold off until July 1 on hiring that third one as well till we have all our fee schedules worked out so right right hand Okay, this, yeah, this was the item that was added. Uh, it's file A220201. I make a motion to add the planning board condition that the landscape strip shall be required along the front of the property and the detention, the detention pond <coughs> approximately 200 feet in length and designed in collaboration with the county landscape architect on VA220201. I'll second. Bring us up to speed. Yes, sir. Last last commission meeting, you voted on a variance to allow uh, a building to be constructed at Howard Lumber. Howard Lumber. That building would be further away from the road than what code allows. One of the conditions that was placed on or recommended to be placed on this was that they had to landscape along the detention pond. When you've approved the variance, that condition was not enumerated. We just want to be very clear that it was explained to you. It was shown on paper. It was in the packet. You just did not make the motion that 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 had to be included in the variance. So the condition they have to put the landscaping in. We brought it back to you tonight. To make sure that is is your will. That's your wish to put the uh, landscaping island along the tension pond for Howard Lumber. This is nothing new. It's just for clarity. Correct. Y'all have already y'all have seen the item. You approved the item. We just left the condition off. Favor. Mr. Driver, any legal matters? No legal matters tonight. Any public comments or participation? I 
I'll make a motion to approve easement power company county property located tax map a four zero seven two one nine six D zero 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 one T zero nine six X and zero eight two zero for the IMS project. Second. L I M S Dam. Georgia Power is currently putting uh, fiber optics in their easements. So this is a this is a reversal of what you typically vote on. This is actually them giving us money versus the other way around. This is our revenue, not an expense. They are looking to put fiber optic lines on some of their big transmission lines, but to do so, they had to get an additional easement from us, allowing them to put communication lines in a power easement. So uh, staff went through this easement thoroughly. There was a lot of language we didn't like. We asked them to change it, and they changed all the language. We're comfortable with it now, and, and so basically granted them the permission to put a fiber optic line on a, on a power line easement. All in favor, raise your right hand. Make a motion to approve $2,500 to use office tax map 045C Ronald Reagan sewer project. Second. This is a, we have to run a new sewer line that's going to cross Ronald Reagan. Unfortunately, we had to get on federal property, so we had to pay him for a little easement here. So <laughs> that was a stormwater line. Now the sewer line here a few years later needs to be replaced, so they're going to punch through there and replace that sewer line. All in favor, raise your right hand. Make a motion to accept the donation of properties for, from Fernando Valquez. Parcel <clears throat> number zero seven one zero or a fella parcel zero one one parcel zero Ashley parcel zero seven seven. Permanent and Gates Sewer Project. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Mr. Chairman, I motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned at 6.32. Thank you.